remember this, you cannot avoid opposition to the Christian religion. It's just something that by, by nature, as far as biblical Christianity, it's gonna happen, you see? Uh, if what I'm talking about is biblical Christianity, uh, just be aware, just be aware where you, someone says that they're a Christian or whatnot. The reason why we go through all the Bible is to, to see stuff like this. Uh, you're not gonna hear a lot of this stuff if people, you know, they pick and choose as far as what it is, because I can pick and choose, and all of a sudden make Jesus and Christianity to be this this religion without any form of blood and stuff. Remember, uh, Christianity was for, founded on this stuff. Right. You see, it was founded on on. Now, the Apostle Paul, there's a there's a verse where he says this in Second Second Timothy three twelve. He says this: Those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, what, will be persecuted. You see, those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, what, will be persecuted. It's something we can't avoid. Okay? So remember this. Uh, when it comes to the Christian faith and there's suffering involved, uh, it's something that we can't escape. Okay? It's something that we, we can't escape. But remember this. Run to Jesus. Don't run to suffering. Okay? Because there has to be a healthy balance between suffering and, and Christianity. Okay? M mind you. Run to Jesus. Don't run to persecution. Don't run to suffering. As a Christian, uh, suffering can be right there, and I can avoid it for the sake of comfort. You see? I can avoid suffering for the sake of comfort, or I can run to it for the sake of righteousness. Okay. So, so, so well, what I mean, what I mean is, when it comes to Christianity and persecution and all that stuff, there, there is a mindset that comes around with people, and this, was, this, this mindset was 2,000 years. Paul mentioned it in Colossians. It was Christians, they run to their persecution, they run to suffering, for the sake of righteousness, okay? This is a belief called asceticism, okay? It's called asceticism. And that is if I'm a Christian and I'm not suffering or I'm not in pain, something's wrong, so I need to feel pain in order to feel righteous before God, okay? So uh, Catholic, Catholics do this. Uh, if you ever seen like uh, monks, what they get, they, they get a whip uh, and they start whipping themselves in the back. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. They start bleeding. This is called asceticism. So through pain, through my physical pain, through my suffering, I'm therefore experiencing the righteousness of Christ somehow. Uh, have you ever seen video clips? You guys are like, oh, really? Like, if you ever seen video clips of uh, people in the Philippines, there is a there's a group called uh, Iglesia Cristo or the Church of Christ, and they crucify themselves. So they literally wear the same clothes of Christ, and they have a cross, and they start getting whipped, beat, and they literally nail their hands. It happens today. Did anyone know that? No. No. Kevin, yeah, you're the only one? Yes. So it's, you, you can see these crazy videos online. But the reason why they're doing it is it's called asceticism. Because if I physically suffer, I'm therefore becoming righteous. Okay? This is a belief common, even the Apostle Paul, he confronts it in the book of Colossians. Okay? So people think, if I suffer, I'm therefore being righteous, the righteousness of God. Uh, remember how Jesus confronts people in, in, in Matthew's Gospel? And he says, look, if you fast... Clean your face up. Make sure no one knows. Because there's an asceticism mindset that says, I'm just suffering for God. I'm just so, I haven't eaten in uh, 10 hours. All right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, it's like, because I haven't eaten for like, you know, five hours, I'm like suffering for Jesus' name. You know? But like, I'm therefore righteous. There's righteousness implied. So when Jesus is saying fast, hey, don't be like these guys. Or they're all in an asceticism mindset that they, they're being righteous if they're suffering. They haven't had a Big Mac in like two hours and they're, you know, it's the end of the world to them. No, it's like, it's like if you're fasting, don't tell anyone. Clean your face up, just don't don't tell anyone. You see, but the mindset is if I suffer, if I fast and all, all this stuff, if I if I hit myself or whatever. Um, do you remember Mahatma Gandhi? He was at the very close to the end of his life and there was a lot of uh, revolt and everything like that. He was, you know, he, he, he did, he never ate. He never ate. And uh, there was some form of righteousness involved in that. Hindu, Hindu priests do the same thing. They, they, they just don't eat, they don't eat, they get really skinny, and they put metal bars around their neck. And they suffocate with that stuff. And they're still alive, but they're suffering. Why? For the sake of righteousness. So if someone's in a, in a physical state like that, they're all skinny, they're suffering and everything, and someone in good physical stature drives in with a Bentley and everything like that, and all of a sudden they, they, they walk outside, what, is, what does it look like? That person's unrighteous, you see? So the person successful, the person that's not suffering is unrighteous, and the person that's suffering is righteous. 
Remember this. Remove this mindset from you. From, because a lot of Christians will have this mindset. Run to Christ. Don't run to suffering. Okay? But if you run to Christ and genuinely do it, opposition will come your way. Those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, what? Will be persecuted. Okay? They will be persecuted. Uh, if I see... Uh, for those of us who've been a believer for, for a long time, uh, let's be honest. When there are moments where you were just on fire. You're sold out for God. You're more vocal about your faith. You stand up for truth. You know what's going to happen? Opposition. But for those of us who are less on fire, for those who are less bold, who don't say a word, um, there's going to there's gonna, there's gonna be zero opposition. You see? But the expectation that God has for every single Christian is to live at that standard of boldness. You see, you remember that uh, that event that happened, uh, the incident that happened two, two or three weeks ago at the boxing gym, my friend who was just on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, why is he so vocal about his faith in a boxing gym with his YouTubers who have millions of followers there? And he's preaching the gospel, this is the way they're looking at it. But I guarantee you there's, there could be other people who are on his fire and they're not gonna say a word. No persecution will happen to them. No opposition will happen to them, but to, to my friend, Opposition will happen to him because he's so vocal about his faith. Those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, what? Will be persecuted. So remember this, the, the, the passage, 2 Timothy 3, 12. Those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Um, persecution is really meant for, you know, I think the horrible question that Kevin's asking Heart of it is meant persecutions from another person. So it, it's very mild here in America. Even with all what's going on in the last month, it's still very mild in comparison to other places. Persecution is I'm, I'm you know, physical harm, uh, death, all that stuff due to your faith. Okay? Now, um, I will say, I will use, I'll be more general and say opposition. If persecution might not happen to you, maybe opposition will. And what I mean by that is, say, demonic activity, uh, spiritual warfare, uh, it will happen. You know, so if you're not experiencing a lot of persecution, something's going to happen as far as the, any form. So opposition will happen. The Apostle Paul says there will be people that preach different Jesuses. You see, different Christ. Uh, I can present Jesus like. I know he's a basketball player, or he's like my best friend, but I can present him as as if he's Lord, and therefore requires obedience from me. That's the way he's presented in the Bible. You see, I think that Christ will get you in more trouble than the Jesus where you can do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Uh, to people who are just committing or living complete debauchery or whatever it is, it's like, oh man, Jesus just he he loves you, he just forgives you, and like there's no form of confrontation to that. You see. They're, they're, they'll, they'll keep living in it, you know. But again, the Jesus that requires lordship from you—that's the Christ. That's Christianity that will experience opposition.